Hey, welcome to my program, uh, fellow STEAM enthusiasts and um, others who may come here seeking help. Uh, I hope that the uh, YouTube algorithm has uh, directed you here because uh, you uh, have, are experiencing a flooding boiler and want to find out why it's flooding and to prevent it from happening. So, uh, usually in my experience, if you have an automatic water feeder, and I don't care whether it's a Unimatch or a VXT or whatever, uh, they all contain, uh, this valve. And what'll happen is that the valve will stick open and, and cause flooding. Um, but before we get into that, I want to make sure that you understand that, uh, what you have to do is you have to make certain that your sight glass is telling you the truth. Um, this is a cutaway version of the bottom fitting because there's where you would uh, put a drain valve. And um, this part here will tend to get clogged with, with dirt. You want to make sure your sight glass is clear. You might need uh, gaskets and gasket nuts. And uh, you want to be able to um, make sure that you can uh, verify that you have the proper amount of water in the boiler and the sight glass is not lying to you really important really important so let's just say that you've uh, you're absolutely certain that the uh, the boiler uh, flooded because you've got water squirting out of vents and uh, relief valves and so forth and so you focus on your feeder so we have the vxt here and this particular model happens to be the 120 volt unit and you come down and you see that uh, either you've hear the the valve passing water and, and you go to your shutoff and you want to make sure your shutoff works and you make sure you that uh, you know where it is um or you you can kill the power to the unit make sure the display is 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 not clear the water continues to flow pretty certain it's it's the valve the valve is stuck open um if you on the other hand uh see that um, there is no uh, sound of running water and you hit the feed and you hear the sound of flow and then you release the feed and the sound continues. Uh, chances are again it's a valve but it might be the electronics. Now you want to be careful when you work with this particular one because it's 120 volts. You pull the terminal off you might have to wiggle it off or you kill the power to it and you've, if you've still got flow and it's the valve. If you if the flow stops, it's the electronics. Now, in my experience, the electronics is pretty stable. Usually, when the electronics fails, it's because it's something wrong with the circuitry. And what will happen is it simply won't work at all. It will not send sp uh, spurious information to this to this valve. Um, all I've seen one out of the scores and scores that I've encountered over the decades where the unit had failed and was sending um, improper information to the valve. So what can happen over time is you have the, this is the internal diaphragm, this is a cutaway here of this, and if you have two little holes, one there and one there, and if both of them get clogged, what will happen is the unit will not shut. You need to be able, you need to get, get the repair kit and uh, take this apart following the instructions. So I've got a couple of videos on that. And uh, Hydro Level has instructions on how to rebuild the, these units. Um, you can uh, repair the valve fairly easily, put it back into service. Um, so... The other thing that can, I've seen cause flooding is the low water cutoff sends spurious signals to the feeder. So the feeder gets a signal from the low water cutoff, hey, give me water, and then it obliges. And um, sometimes the electronics are bad, uh, but mostly it's um, the probe. So here's an example of a hydro level probe. Um, this is the part to the outside that's hooked up to the electronics. It's a little wing nut. You can pull the terminal off and uh, see whether it's detecting uh, the water or not. But what can happen is that, um, let's see if I can 
This is the ceramic insulation. You sort of, and then this is the metallic uh, stainless steel part. And what can happen is this can get coated. I've seen it happen where this gets coated with calcium minerals and the resistance then goes up above about 5,000 ohms and the unit will not be able to detect the water and will continue to call for water for the automatic feeder and the automatic feeder does its job. You take the cure is either take the probe out and you can clean it, but I would also, um, if you've got an extra one to, to replace it, and um, if the electronics is over 10 years old, the manufacturer usually recommends replacing the electronics too. They've upgraded them over the years. But this will also cause um, uh, flooding. Then the um, other ones say, Gordo, you know, I, do even, I don't even have an automatic feeder. Um, why am I still getting uh, too much water in my boiler? And that's when you start thinking that maybe this uh, shutoff valve, sometimes you might leave it just partly cracked, or you might have a hand wheel, the type with the hand wheel, and it might be passing water slowly over the summer. Um, I have seen where the valve is shut, and it'll pass water through into the boiler. Uh, you go ahead and cut the line, and you don't see any water dripping out. So you think, wow, what the, that can't be this. And you hook it back up again with the coupling, and sure enough, the next couple of days, it's flooded again. Um, usually what's happened if, with the um, low lead uh, alloys, they, they take a higher temperature to get the solder to flow, and that tends to uh, damage the... Um, the seal, there is the um, PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene seal, on, and there's um, the ball in there, typical ball construction. Um, if these get scored, uh, they'll pass water. I've got this one so that you can, got the, uh, just so you can see the construction there. This is the pack uh, uh, bonnet. Uh, the I removed the, um, this is the Teflon bonnet material that gets squished in there, and this can come out. Let's see if I can get it. Ah, that's right. Come on, there you go. It's not. It's being difficult, but camera shy, I guess. Uh, this comes out. I think should. Anyway, the ball and the sp and the um. um Uh, spindle in there, the stem rather, comes apart and then the stem will come out. <laughs> Definitely not cooperating. Oh well. But you get the idea. There's another um, seat on the other side and it can look like everything is fine, but then when you put it together, so if you have suspicions, go ahead and, and, and replace this with one that's more resistant to um, uh, overheating. I usually like the red white valve if you can get them or you can get a male adapter uh, sweat that on and then um, crank on a male iron pipe is probably your better your better deal to make certain that uh, this guy is not going to pass water because it gets really frustrating to track that one down. You, you've rebuilt the sometimes if you have one of these you rebuild it and it still floods you replace the male adapter but it still floods um, then you start wondering that maybe uh, the wet, a wet return might be clogged and uh, holding water and allowing it to go back into the boiler. Or a radiator valve might be shut, but holding water and uh, releasing it slowly over the summer into, uh, into the boiler. Well, I know this is going on for a very long time. If you have any uh, other ideas where you've run into uh, that have caused flooded uh, steam boilers, let me know in the comments below if there's anything I didn't cover or, or if something that wasn't clear. Uh, your questions um, really help uh, make me uh, better video, uh, better videos, and um, I hope that uh, this was helpful. If it is, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.